My name is Ioannis Llanos and I'm Professor of Global Competition Law and Policy at UCL Faculty of Laws. I will introduce you today the course on the role of economics in competition law and practice. The recourse to economic evidence in EU competition law over the last 20 years has been one of the main characteristics of its transformation. Starting with merger control in the early 1990s and moving slowly but steadily in the area of antitrust in the late 2000s, economic evidence has become an essential ingredient of a successful competition law case, either at the level of authorities or courts. The increasing importance of private enforcement for competition law violations in national courts raises important questions of proof and evaluation of damages. At the same time, the number of economists active in the area of competition law and policy worldwide has considerably risen. The creation of the position of Chief Economist of the European Commission with his team in 2003, the recruitment of a number of professional economists by the European Commission and national competition authorities, and the important number of economic consultancies active in the area of competition law in Europe illustrate the role of sound economic analysis in competition law. Legal professionals are thus obliged to work with economists in the preparation and assessment of a competition law case. The legal system has taken stock of the challenges presented by economic evidence and has intervened to regulate the way this evidence is assessed and to explore its probative value. In Europe, this task has been mainly exercised by the various competition authorities, which develop soft law guidelines discussing best practices for the submission and assessment of economic and econometric evidence in administrative as well as in judicial proceedings. However, these texts are mainly soft law guidance documents and do not engage with the broader legal questions of evidence and how this should be assessed. There is no comprehensive work in Europe, or also in the United States, addressing systematically the important issues raised by the recourse to economic evidence in the various competition law proceedings. Against this background, this course aims to provide a systematic legal and economic analysis of economic evidence in EU competition law. It is important to stress here the need for both a legal and an economic analysis of the issues raised by economic evidence. Most commentary published in this area and courses on economics and competition law are done by economists and do not engage with the theories and practices of evidence law. This may be explained by the fact that few evidence lawyers engage with economic analysis and economic evidence and that few competition lawyers engage with issues of evidence law as such. Economists are also generally emphasizing the technical issue of building good economic arguments and models in cases, but not issues relating to evidence law, which are considered as being the realm for lawyers. To this, one could add that there are various legal traditions in Europe, and the concept of evidence as such is not understood or examined in the same way. This may have implications for the assessment of economic evidence in the decentralized system of EU competition law enforcement. The first part of the course will examine the different types of economic evidence presented in competition law cases. Then will come the analysis of the different instances in which economic evidence may be presented in EU competition law proceedings. Merger control, cartels, cooperation agreements, horizontal or vertical, abuse of dominance, damages, sanctions and remedies, and for which aspects of a competition law case. Specific examples from real cases will be given for each of the areas of competition law. The discussion will aim to provide the students with necessary background knowledge, enabling them to understand the analysis that is followed in competition cases. The seminar will aim to introduce the participants to the economic theories that underlie competition law and the methods that are used to assess whether business practices are nefarious, benign or healthy. Economic methods that are used to assess competition issues by competition regulators we particularly emphasize. The first, part, the first part of the course and the first seminars will provide a basic introduction to the economics of markets, including the theory of demand and supply, monopoly, oligopoly and product differentiation, as well as multi-sided markets and economic analysis performed for some types of anti-competitive practices. For instance, the first seminar will focus on market definition and market power. It will explore the economic foundations of antitrust law, looking first at the concept of market power, what is a market failure, and whether and when Antitrust intervention is needed. It will then focus on the task of market definition, a key step in antitrust analysis often criticized but still valuable. Special cases of market definition such as two-sided markets will also be discussed. The second seminar will focus on the oligopoly problem and generally collusion. It will present a contentious debate about the case for intervention against collusion in the absence of evidence of an explicit cartel agreement. It will explore the economic underpinnings of a collusive agreement. 
this economic insights are directly relevant to the legal test for finding a position of collective dominance and for the assessment of coordinated effects under merger control. The seminar will also explore the main models of uncoordinated competition which are relevant for the assessment of unilateral effects under merger control. The following seminar will focus on exclusionary pricing practices. It will cover the category of pricing exclusionary abuses of a position of dominance under Article 102 with a focus on loyalty rebates. We will particularly discuss the Intel case. Predatory pricing will also be discussed, emphasizing the similarities in the corresponding legal test with respect to the so-called as efficient as competitor test. The distinction between the Commission's view and the Court's view will also be put and uh, will emphasize on. The following actually two seminars will focus on consumer theories of harm. We will explore the use of economics with a focus on the insights from behavioral economics in the enforcement of consumer law, specifically the provisions against unfair consumer practices and contract terms. To this end, four main scenarios will be developed mapping the interactions both on the demand and supply sides. The final seminar in this part of the course will focus on economics, on the economics of merger control. We will examine the use of economic evidence in merger control cases, more particularly the use of econometrics in order to predict the anti-competitive effect of mergers, but also economic models uh, used in order to substantiate efficiency gains. The second part of the course will focus on an applied antitrust law type of case uh, by doing the anatomy of an antitrust case. We will examine the use of economic evidence in specific case studies in order to illustrate the interaction of law and economics as it happens in practice. Students will be introduced to the anatomy of a competition law case, touching upon all the issues examined in the previous seminar from a more practical perspective. We will proceed with these case studies in two seminars. The third part of the course will take a more legal perspective and will focus on the interaction between economic evidence and the legal rules of evidence and procedure. We will explain how scientific evidence and the complex inferences based on economic reasoning may create important challenges for evidence law thinking. We will emphasize the differences and similarities of different kinds of economic evidence and what distinguishes them from other forms of evidence in social science. We will discuss the specificity of economics as a source of scientific evidence and will raise the question of the application of similar criteria for economic evidence than those usually employed for scientific evidence, looking to the standards developed by the European courts and other EU institutions. We will then examine the way in which economic evidence has been integrated in competitional proceedings in Europe. We will first look to the various points of access of economic evidence in legal decision making in competition law by looking to procedural and institutional aspects such as the rules regarding court appointed experts, party experts and the administrative process in the EU and key EU jurisdictions like the United Kingdom, France and Germany. We will examine issues raised by the substantive assessment of economic evidence relating to the legal regulation of proof, burden of proof, standard of proof and the concept of causation in selected legal systems. We we'll finally delve into specific forms of economic evidence with the aim to explain what other forms this evidence may take, in which context this type of evidence has been used by providing examples of cases, how this evidence was assessed in general, and challenges to the law of evidence created by economic analysis. We we'll then look to the various institutions in the selected jurisdictions enforcing competition law and making use of economic evidence. How have they been internally organized in order to assess this type of evidence? Which internal procedures and routines have they developed? How much and how critically do they engage with economic evidence and for which specific types of economic evidence more than others? We will conclude by providing a summary of the findings, critical remarks about the ways different types of economic evidence were introduced in competitional proceedings in Europe and comments on the institutional settings that enable a more active engagement with economic evidence as well as recommendations on principles and best practices. The teaching team will be composed by Dr. Paolo Siciliani, an economist also trained as a lawyer, who has considerable experience in competition law cases, having worked previously for the Office of Fair Trading, the BBC Trust and the Bank of England. Professor Damian Zeradan, a famous antitrust practitioner and academic, having represented clients in various cases in Europe and the United States, will also contribute to this course. Finally, myself, Professor Yanis Llanos, who is an authority on the use of economic evidence in competition authorities and courts, having researched and published extensively in this field uh, course uh, for the last 20 years. 
The course will be convened by, uh, by myself, it will be interactive and will involve an active student participation. It will be examined uh, by a dissertation. We hope that you will be part of our team.